Hello, everybody. I'm glad to see you all made it after the break. Um, join me in welcoming uh, Diego, Sergio, and Gabriel, who actually will be combining their talks to do a 40-minute discussion about RSK. Uh, for those who have been in the space for a while, you would know that RSK has been building on top of Bitcoin for quite some time, looking at how to add smart contracts and extensibility to Bitcoin, rather than looking at other protocols uh, to engage with. Um, they have an announcement in relation to scalability of their system and would like to give an update from last year when they spoke at Consensus. So if you may please uh, join me in a warm welcome to have them come up on stage. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Well, I'm very happy to be once again at Consensus sharing uh, our advances and also our vision. And um, this year, it's a very special year because we have a lot of achievements um, from our team and our platforms. Uh, and this story started in 2015 uh, when we released the white paper for Rootstock back then, now known as RSK, uh, with the idea of bringing smart contracts into Bitcoin, having smart contract capabilities in the Bitcoin ecosystem. So we came in consensus, to consensus in 2016, and we share our vision, the vision of the internet of value, a network of networks for the transfer of value, secured by Bitcoin, with Bitcoin at the core. And also on that year, we released the alpha for RSK, it was an internal version. On the following year, at consensus, we presented the testnet of RSK. So Year after year, we updated and delivered on our vision. And in 2018, it was a key moment for us because we released the mainnet, the RSK mainnet, that started only with 5% of the hashing power of Bitcoin. But during the year, it reached 48% of the hashing power of Bitcoin, becoming the safest smart contract platform in the world. So. Another thing that happened is that we move also our vision one step forward because last year, uh, Reef was launched. Reef is decentralized cloud infrastructure services built on top of RSK and also is a set of libraries that will enable mass adoption uh, in the hands of developers. But we will get deeper into that. Another important thing is that Reef was born as a spin-off of RSK, and last year we realized you know, we could fulfill our purpose better by joining both teams, and Reef and RSK became one organization, which will very soon be renamed as IOB Labs. Uh, and IOB Labs will keep moving the vision forward, both for RSK and Reef, and building this full ecosystem on top of Bitcoin. Um, in that sense, the purpose of IOB Labs is to build the financial system of the future, or at least to push this movement forward so that happens. So we think that Bitcoin is the cornerstone for a new open financial system. And what we are doing is creating the protocols on top that will enable a full financial system to exist. But of course, it's not in our hands to build that. We need to bring you know, traditional organizations, we need to build disruptors, innovators, developers on top of this ecosystem. And RSK plays the part of bringing smart contracts, as I like to say, agreements, because that's what smart contracts are, agreements between parts, between people and machines, between people and organizations, between organizations, here in a centralized way, in the same fashion as Bitcoin does. And Reef fulfills two main functions. As I said, it's cloud, decentralized cloud computing. So it's naming services, data storage, payment processing, instant payment processing, scalability solutions, but also it's a unified development environment. Um, so that's why 
we wanted to separate the organization from the platforms by in, in brand's terms so people could understand that the whole thing is part of the same vision. We as an organization are pushing that vision forward and we will create all the protocols needed for that vision to exist. And those are open protocols where others can implement their own version. So it's not that we own the protocols, we just set the foundations, the framework, so others can collaborate and be part of this ecosystem that we are building. This is how the IOB architecture looks. As you can see at the core, we have Bitcoin as a store of value. Then we have RSK as a wrapper on top, offering business logic, decentralized business logic. Then we have the Rift secure, secure Communications Protocol that secures all the communications between this, the different components. So we keep communications private, we keep them censorship resistance. And then on top of that, you have the core Rift protocols. So you have payment processing, similar, we will talk later about that, similar to what Lightning is doing on top of, of Bitcoin. You have data storage, you have gateways to gather information from outside world into the blockchain or from other blockchains into other blockchains. So we start creating this interconnection between the different networks. We start creating this internet of value. And Reef Directory to simplify the transfer, the interactions between people. So you can start using nicknames instead of long strings of letters and numbers. Uh, so that's a key uh, usability improvement. And on top of that, we are creating libraries that will abstract the complexities of decentralized infrastructure so any developer can use this infrastructure. Because what happened so far is that mostly this space was limited to only the experts in the matter, the ones that knew how blockchain technology worked. So now we want to create libraries that will speak the language of developers. Libraries developed in Java, in Python, in C Sharp, in the language that developers already use. And we abstract the base, the, base, the core business uh, concept so they can you know, play around with those Legos instead of building from the bottom up. And we are working with partners to build the core financial services, the core services on top of that. Uh, so then, you know, application developers and organizations can start building tailor-made solutions with all those components. Um, and another thing that is very, or for me, is very important is that, you know, we build these technologies with purpose. We started our journey in 2015 with the purpose of enabling financial inclusion. So at the core of what we do is social transformation. It's not that we do this only for the technology's sake. For us, it's, it's as important to create great technology as it is to impact the world. And during the, the last year, something amazing happened that, that we already have projects that are impact, impacting the life of people in a meaningful way. And uh, these projects are supported by big organizations like UNICEF, the, the Inter-American Development Bank, uh, Accenture, and ourselves. And also we have, you know, old timers from the crypto space. We have BitGive that launched their new platform on top of RSK. BitGive is the oldest donation platform in the space. Uh, so I think we are achieving this vision of bringing together the crypto world, the decentralized world with the traditional world and building a better world for all of us. So that's very amazing. And on top of this, we have other projects focusing on other areas that are not necessarily social impact, but disrupting industries or improving industries, I would say. Um, like logistics, finance, different areas of, of impact. But I think, you know, there are challenges that are not only our challenges, are the challenges of the whole ecosystem we live in. And the main challenge is adoption. It's like, you know, if you look at the whole space, you can say that we have maybe 50 million users 
not all of them active, you know, but in total. And that's a fraction of the world. That's not yet a relevant number of people in the world. It's the early adopters, the visionaries that are here. And then we have the sustainability and scalability problems. But from the adoption perspective, I would say the main challenge, and I mentioned this before, is that so far we have been trying to bring developers into the inner workings of blockchain, like trying to make developers start learning how to do a smart contract. And building smart contracts is more alike to do in avionics than it needs to do a web application. Because in a smart contract, if you program something wrong, then you lose money. And we have seen that in the past. Like smart contracts are very tough, maybe not necessarily from the programming language, but from the security perspective. So I think we need to switch our perspective. And instead of bringing developers into the core of our technologies, we need to bring the technology to them. We need to make this technology so easy to use that a game, a game developer that already has a very successful game with, I don't know, 500,000 users can integrate and tokenize their, econo their economies and you know, use decentralized infrastructure in a seamless way. So what we want is to bring the technology to them so then they can create and innovate within their current applications, within their current business models. The other thing is that we have been discussing a lot about disruption. And I, I love disruption. I, I've been a pioneer of the web in the 90s, so you know, it's, it's not that I'm against it. The thing is that disruption without mass adoption is, meaning, is meaningless. It's like, who are we disrupting? How, how are we disrupting ourselves? So before we, we can disrupt, we need to create mass adoption. We need to bridge the gap between traditional organizations that have the users and these technologies so we can create a critical mass and then reinvent those industries or improve those industries in, in, and create new models. So that's another very important thing to move from disruption into value creation. When value creation happens, big amounts of users will come, and then we can talk about the real disruption. And finally, I think these systems, I mean, this Internet of Value, like the Internet of Information, will have certain emerging patterns that will be very disruptive indeed. And one of those is, well, in the case of the Internet of Information, social networks is one that everybody can relate to or understand. In the case of the Internet of Value, the most important thing is decentralized finance, which is uh, what we started looking for in 2015. Now it has a name, DeFi, but you know, we have been talking about this for years. And also, you know, collaborative economies. If you look at the core of the more successful companies or some of the more successful companies today, uh, like Uber, Airbnb, the core is trust creation between people by, by using reputational models. The problem with that is that they keep the reputation in their hands. They don't share that reputation with the users. With these technologies, we can start creating reputational profiles in the hands of the users. So we are building the, the basements for a, a global society, a society without frontiers based on reputational identities, a society where anybody can create their collaborative economies and value is distributed more fairly among those who could produce the value. Um, and I also mentioned scalability and sustainability. And for that, I will leave you in the hands of our legendary chief scientist, Sergio Lerner, to share with you our strategy on how to tackle this problem. Thank you.